Mom, 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 well, I'm doing a video where I'm showing off all of my wands. Yes, it will be fun. But can you just be quiet so that I can do it? Thank you. Hi guys, today, as you might have heard, I'm going to be showing you my complete wand collection. So this is every single wand which I've got up to this date. Enjoy. show you the wands of the collection today, I just want to show you this wand stand. This was made by my grandpops the last time I went and saw him and it's actually perfectly made to support even the shortest and the longest of my wands. And I made this with him because he is a real wizard with woodwork and we made this together and we designed it together so this is a great memory as well as being a wonderful way to display my wands. All of my reviews today are going to be camera top-down reviews and the first one which we're going to be looking at is the official Warner Brothers Tour Sirius Black Wand. This is my longest wand and as you can see I can barely fit it in the screen. It's just huge. Let's see, it's... It's a good like 15 inches or something, it's just giant. But this is my only official wand. And I particularly like this one. This is Sirius Black's wand. And we've got the really nice detailing all the way along. Because first up, you've got these kind of runes carved in. All these squares and triangles. Very solid shapes. But then, we also go from a very square tip. However, as we go along, it gets thinner and more tapered. And it actually becomes a round point and it has this lovely spiral work going all the way around up to the tip with all of these circles in it. And I think that that's really nice how we've got this sort of duality between one end and the other. It just morphs gradually. And that's something which we don't have with any of the other wand designs except for Sirius Blacks. I think that this is a lovely dark brown woody colour although I do prefer wands which actually look like they are made of wood. But besides this, this is a lovely wand and I'm so pleased to have it in my collection. Our second wand which we're going to be looking at today is another serious black wand and this one is from Geek Gear. In contrast, Geek Gear's version of this wand is significantly smaller as you can see. This is probably only just over 13 inches and it's also significantly thinner. So whereas this one has quite a big bulk to it, this one's very, very skinny. It feels a lot lighter, it feels a lot more snappable. It's also a much more brown colour, whereas the official one has a kind of grey, dark brown colour, this one's a very bright brown colour. It's still got the same design carved in, so we're still going from the runes and the square tip up to the round tip with the circles and I actually think that I quite like how they've carved it quite as sharp in the carving so you've got all the shapes but they're not quite so pristinely cut but I like that it gives it a slightly more natural warped look which is how I think that a wand should be so for that I do prefer but I definitely prefer the thickness and the length of the official one Nevertheless, you can't go wrong having two wands instead of just one, so I'm not complaining. One of my favourite wands now, this is Newt's Commander's Wand from Fantastic Beasts, and this is another Geek Gear wand. I think that this was the first wand which I ever got from Geek Gear, and I do love this wand a lot. Firstly, it looks a lot like bamboo, so it's got that real wood growing natural look to it and we can see that because of these leaves along here and the way that that actually stands out I can actually feel an indent here from where the wood grows out and away from these leaves not only that but actually on the inside we've got all of this lovely silver which I'm guessing is supposed to be like unicorn essence or something 
but it looks really magical and I think that it adds a really nice detail to this wand. Probably one of the most questionable wands in my collection. This is Ron's Spellitaped wand from Chamber of Secrets, also designed and made by Geek Gear. I cannot take this wand seriously in any way, shape or form. Firstly, this being Ron's snapped wand, it is full of fun memories from when he's bashing it against the Ford Anglia, crying stop, 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 and of course then he ends up spellitaping it, which is what this here is. So it's a comical wand from the offset, however I actually find this one funny because I don't think very much of this wand personally. I don't think that the speller tape here looks very much like tape at all. It looks to me like a lump of glue rather than something which is supposed to be magical tape. Not glue at all. And the other thing is the lack of detail to this wand. It's not even clever in a simple way. It just looks like a bit of wood that has been smoothed up, given two little grooves here, and then snapped and stuck together. There's really not much to this wand. The only thing which I find particularly redeeming is that we do get a sense of grain in the way that this has been painted. Ron's second wand, he owned this one from somewhere between Chamber of Secrets until Deathly Hallows when they had to all stop having their wands because of it being traceable. This one is probably Geekia's best design. I like this wand considerably more than Ron's other wand because of a number of reasons. Firstly, it's got this lovely dark colour, this really rich deep colour. And although it doesn't have any grain in it, it's very mottled in terms of its shape, it's very sort of bent and broken almost, all in here where it sort of tapers and then it bumps out again, and that makes it look a lot more woody. And then when we've got the handle itself, that looks particularly woody because you've kind of got this sort of bark almost and these layers about it. And just the amount of detail in this, all of the little indents and the different colours, the greeny tones, the goldy tones, even the very blacky kind of tones are really, really nice here. I just think that that looks great. It fits quite comfortably in the hand, again, because you've got this kind of shape where it goes thicker and thinner and then it goes big again on the outside. I would say that besides the handle, there isn't too much to say about this wand. It's the same kind of length as all of the others. Again, it's about 13 or 14 inches. I like this wand, but it's not one of my favourites. It's not on the bottom of my ranking for wands, but it's not at the very top. I do like the handle, but the fact that there isn't really anything else particularly interesting about this wand means that it's probably going to be about halfway on my ranks. Now for the buy one, get one free edition of this video. This is Fred and George's wands. These ones both came out one month apart from each other, also from Geek Gear, as you can tell by their length. Geek Gear ones are slightly shorter, and we're going to be looking at these next. That actually wasn't quite correct. It was this one which I got in May, and then this one which I got in July. So we'll talk about this one first since I got it earlier. I do like this design because it kind of looks like it's from like a pine cone or something. That's what all these layers here look like to me, which is something which I really like. It's also got these little knobbly bits coming down just a little bit. I would have liked a bit more detail generally, but I think that that's all right. And they've done a nice paint job along it as well. It has got a sense of some degree of grain, although it's very varnished grain at that. I would probably say this wand is about 13 or 14 inches again. So that's the other thing. Most Geek Gear wands, they are all about the same length. Whereas you would find in the Harry Potter books or on Pottermore, the wand lengths can vary quite a bit. They can go from about 9 inches all the way up to maybe 15, maybe 16. However, I do think that having an extremely long or extremely short wand does not necessarily suggest anything directly. 
This wand, however, is not nearly as good as its brother. In fact, if we take a look at the picture from the Geek Gear booklet when this one first came, this design here is completely different to what we get. So here in the handle, you've got this multiple layering of carved wood. It doesn't look painted, it genuinely looks like a bit of wood which has been carved in layer upon layer. Kind of like the fancy carving that you'll see in some good architecture inside buildings, especially like inside churches and things. So it's definitely got that kind of really artistic, ornate look about it. However, what we see here is completely different. For starters, this base wood colour is considerably lighter, whereas here we're looking at a very red kind of wood colour. Very red, in fact. Really, really red. Whereas this is extremely pale. This is more like beach or something. And then these bands going around are so dark they do not look at all like they are supposed to be the same wood. They look like strips of leather which have been sort of wrapped around over and over. And the same goes for this bit here and the wrapping here. However, I can kind of excuse that in a sense because that bit here does look like it fits in with the original design. So this is probably my least favourite wand because of all of those defects. It's just really shoddily made compared to the others. Regardless, it is nice to have a set of both Fred and George's wands, however I still would prefer to have them actually looking the way that the wands are supposed to look. My only witch's wand in my collection, this one is Luna's wand and is also designed by Geek Gear. It's actually the perfect size for me because as you can see its handle fits my hand perfectly. Luna's wand is again about 14 inches and just to show you a little bit more clearly as you can see it does fit my hand just right with just its edge poking out on that side. So that's the good thing about having a flower kind of shaped handle which kind of goes out and then in again because it just means that it's got this perfect shape to grip into the hand. It's got lovely smooth carving, you can really feel the indents and it's just very very soft, nothing sharp, nothing sudden, just really nice shape to be able to slide your hands over. What is not ideal about this is that it does only have the one tone to it in terms of colour. It doesn't have anything special about it, it doesn't look like it's been carved out of real wood because there isn't any different variants in its shading, you can't see any kind of grain. But besides that, its shape is beautiful. It's something which I really like about Luna's wand, is that it's just simple and pretty. Although I do prefer a more woody, grainy look to my wands, I think that its shape is very nice and it's definitely one which I like to have in my collection. And it is my only witch's wand, so I definitely need to get Hermione Granger's wand at some point. Now we're going to be taking a look at the Elder Wand. This was actually a cheap knockoff from China, and you can tell this by its size and also its colour, but it did come in a very nice box. Considering this Elder Wand is neither official nor geek gear made, I think that this is actually quite a good wand. So it's the Elder Wand, as you can probably tell from the design, and it's about 13 inches, maybe a little bit more, but not very much. It gets gradually bigger, and it's got these different bumps as we go along, as we've seen the Elder Wand have in the movies. And it's also got all of these tiny holes just dotted all inside, all along the handle here, and also on any of the bumps as we go down. It's painted in such a way that means that it does have these grey and black lines in it, which looks quite grainy, and the circles themselves are so irregular, all of these little holes, that it does look quite natural, like the kind of holes which are formed in wood from various insects and beetles and things. It's not particularly comfortable for the hand because of its design, although that is because of the design of the actual Elder Wand instead of it being a fault in its production. This one really didn't cost me very much at all and it's definitely worth it 
to have an elder wand in my collection. I think that it is a very good job of doing this. I think the only particular fault that I have with this wand is that its bottom is very flat, there's no carving, no shape to it. It's even just painted black, whereas the rest of this has obviously been made black and then the grey has been kind of painted roughly on top with it being rubbed off as it's been going. And you can tell that because we've got this black and then bits of the grey overlapping it. So besides the completely flat bottom, very disappointing end there, I think that this is a very nice wand and definitely worth the couple of quid that it took me from buying it online. Our final Geek Gear wand for today. This was actually designed by somebody who buys the subscription and who won the competition. This is a really lovely design, so let's take a closer look. This is an exceptional wand among my collection. Okay, it doesn't have the mottled, browny, different tones to make it look like it's actually wood. That's something which I think definitely needs improvement on in terms of the wands being produced by Geek Gear. However, its carving, its design is wonderful, and let me show you why. Firstly, we've got these bits jutting out along its length, just all these random kind of shapes, which gives it a very natural woody look. It's literally like some bits of the wood are just harder to get smooth, and so they've been left there during the smoothing and production of carving it, like you would a real wand. And the other thing, the most notable thing, is this gorgeous bird. We can see how the wood is kind of scratched and like squashed up here, which makes this wonderful post for the bird to actually stand on. And then we get into the bird itself. We can even see the details of its claws at the bottom of its legs where it's holding on and all of the little indents on the feathers, they're carved so well, they're fluffy almost. You've got layer upon layer of them, but then even the individual feathers have these tiny grooves in them. And the same with the wings going back, and this is just carved so so well. There's not a bit of detail out of place, there's absolutely nothing missing. We can even see where his eyes are actually looking because we've got these tiny little dots inside his eyes, which is just fantastic. It's also quite a thick wand so it doesn't feel flimsy in the slightest because it's so wide in its design. It's even quite blunted on the end, but that just makes it look a bit more sticky because to be honest, a bit of wood doesn't usually survive the survive. To be honest, a bit of wood probably won't survive the refining process of turning it into a wand if it's made too pointy. It does need to have a fair amount of thickness even at its tip. And that's why this is such a good wand. As you can see, I've got some fantastic wands in my collection. If you stick around until after the end credits roll, I have two bonus ones to review. As always, thank you very much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this video, keep collecting! As promised, it's time for my bonus wand review, I've actually got two wands to show you. Now, as you probably don't know, my grandpops is really good with woodwork. In fact, he's actually got a shed out the back of his house where he's got loads of tools and varnishes and bits of wood and all sorts. So whenever I go and see him, he's usually happy to make a little something for me. And he actually helped to make my wand stand, which you saw earlier in the video. So the first wand which he made for me was this one here. As you can see, it's a little bit unconventional with its design, what with it having a handle on one end and then this bump here before the tip. But I guess that what he was thinking was about the sort of the very old fashioned kind of ideas of wands rather than the idea that we have from Harry Potter. 
but since then I think that he's done a little bit more research into that as you'll see from the next one that I show you. But we'll look at this one first. So this is actually made of wood, it's not resin or varnish or anything, it's actually wood. So that's why it is so thick and chunky. As for this little symbol here, it's not a rune, although it looks quite rune-like. That is what my grandpa puts on all of his work. This is the second wand that he made for me, and as you can see it's a lot more conventional. We don't have the random bulk at the end, it just tapers fairly smoothly all the way along except for this little ridge bump here, which I guess is just to give it a bit more design and make it look more wood-like. Again, it's proper wood, as you can hear from that little sound there, and it's got this lovely black colour. He's painted the whole thing black because it's very expensive to buy ebony wood or anything like that. It's probably made out of this wood and then he's just painted it black in order to make it look like an expensive wood. And he's also put his symbol on again but this time it's in gold which looks so so cool, I love it. He's managed to make this effect on the handle using string and what looks like a glue gun in order to stick it into place but it looks very nice, okay, a little bit haphazard, a little bit DIY, but I really like it. It just looks like it's been made. Like, it's better to have something which doesn't quite look like it's all wood if it looks like it's been done with care, with a lot of thought about it. Besides, call me sentimental, but I think it's just fantastic to have a wand made for me by my own granddad. Well, I hoped you guys liked seeing these very unique ones. Thank you so much for sticking around to the very end of the video. Much appreciated. Have a great day. Thank you.